Hello, this is Palico Patch, and welcome back to another episode of Sunless Sea Submarina. And we had a good end to the last episode. We took down a sw swarm fluke, I think it's called, uh, the big uh, uh, sea anomaly thing which had lots of health. And I thought, probably wrongly so, I probably should have at least looked into it before engaging it, but I thought because it had so much health, it had 750 health, then that means it would hit hard. Apparently not. It only hits for two, which is great. So we took that down to Chinatown and uh, got a, what I think is a colour uh, for one of the uh, uh, the uh, colours we need to find for the the person who's falling apart up in Venderbite. Forget his name. The curator. Yeah, the, the falling apart curator. Something along those lines. Anyway, so we're going to keep hold of that. It's probably with a bit of moolah, but now I know they don't hit that hard, I'm happier to take those on. The worst part about all this, though, is we've been on such a death trip, killing everything that we come across because of our super duper new gun. We're actually running low on, on, on uh, t uh, torpedoes. So we need to watch that. Hopefully we can pick them up from somewhere. I don't know where. I haven't seen anywhere else you can buy them outside of London as of yet. But I'm sure something will come up sooner or later. As it stands, our normal gun is okay with the iron that we have at the moment. So we should be okay. He says, he says, famous last words, you know, famous last words. Our terror is a little bit high, 74. We could do have taken that down. But again, that would just be a case of picking the battles and, and uh, dealing with them as quickly and as effectively as possible. Again, just to save on those torpedoes, uh, the little ones we have left. But we found this place, the Empire of Hands. So there's going to be a little bit of reading initially to start here. We'll find out what the bloody hell's going on here, and then we shall continue northwards in our pursuit for fuel, because we are running pretty low on fuel as it stands right now. So, a stern reminder from the Admiralty. In the name and by the power of Her Enduring Majesty, a trade embargo and quarantine in absolute perpetuity... Perpetuity? Perpetuity, yes, has hereby been declared on the Empire of Hands. No ship of London is to permit aboard a Pentecost ape without express and prior admission to the Admiralty. Number two, any and all acts of spirifage are prohibited. Spirifage. Three, they know what they did. Beware of stowaways, keep a tight grip on your soul. And that's an excerpt from the Standard Naval Regulations, Volume 4. Well, obviously the first three volumes were just as riveting. Uh, the Flea Ridden Mare. With the regulations in mind, it is a surprise to be greeted by a mere itchy monkey in a tattered yellow robe, barely walking with the help of a ceremonial staff. With the regulations in mind, it is a surprise, I've just read that bit, an official greeting. Hello, cries the mayor, in the broken voice of one not yet used to human speech. Oh, okay. Come, make selves at home, or wel wel souls welcome in bountiful empire of hands. The crew shifts uncomfortably. They know the stories. It will take more than the natural beauty of this place to make most of them risk shore leave here. Okay, well, looks like we're by ourselves here. Uh, so Port Stanton, I guess, is the place to go. Soul-hungry monkeys reluctantly tend this training post, waiting for an opportunity to escape. Bloated fleas hop from ape to man and man to ape, gorging themselves without a care for which is which. So we have a weak call for help. An emaciated man is slumped against the wall of the docks, sitting on a huge crate. He waves weakly at you. Uh, oh, Rosegate, the fate of the cigar, no more than zero. No idea what that means, sounds interesting. What does he want? Oh, thank God, the dogged apprentice gasps. I don't know how long I've been here. It's been days, weeks since I ran out of money. I've got to get back to Rosegate, beneath the waves. His crate rumbles beneath him. Please help me. And if you had anything I could eat? Well, yeah, supplies we can spare. That's fine. He's clearly weak with hunger. Let's, let's help him out. Thank you, thank you. The dogged apprentice springs up to embrace you, but collapses onto the dock. After seeing him to a bunk, you check and double-check that your crew has securely stored away his rumbling crate. Well, guess we need to find that port under the water. I'm sure it'll come up at some point. Uh, we could do shore leave. The parasynthetic jungle holds many data. Step carefully. There are no authority beyond the fence. Mm, don't think I like that. An audience for the flea with a mare. Yeah, see all he wants, I suppose. He is not busy. No appointments are required. King of an empty castle. The flea with a mess scratches himself on a chair made of crates, surrounded by boxes of long, rotten trade goods. As a five-sold ape, ape, he would be able to petition for membership of court. For now, the trade embargo has left him trapped 
on the outside, and three sold overseer with no talent for order. In better times, being overseer of Port Stanton gave the incumbent their pick of visitors to the Empire. Now it is a thankless task as any to be found in the Neath. So we can sell our soul. I'd like to think my soul's worth more than 200 echoes. So no, that's fine. Uh, acquire fresh supplies. Refine on supplies. Uh, acquire emergency fuel. 40 echoes per one. Don't really want to do that. So we'll excuse ourselves for the time being. Can't get a port report. Uh, looks like there's more to explore. Uh, we have a zeppelin. Oh, okay. Intense work is uh, underway across the bridge. Turned away. Two monkey guards wielding rifles and rusty bayonets block the bridge. This is not for your eyes, outsider. Avert them. Walk away. Walk faster. Good human. Good human. Okay. Uh, put a blemigan ashore. Ooh. Blemigans and monkeys on the same island. Nothing bad can come of this. I like that. We we've got one. Go! Go! The Blemigum disappears into the dense jungle. It should thrive in the Empire's cold humidity. I think that's good. There was, there was no sort of bad ending to that. I don't think. Any shops here? No. Okay, well, I guess we're going to zail the Empire of Hands. Communal wooden boats offer three passage to all travellers willing to row between islands. Well, I might as well do them all. Sovereign Island first. A wooden palace stretches across the whole island, passage to it lit by a field of tiny glim boys. The heart of the empire, many boats circle the island, all keeping their distance. The one that gets closest is an extended rowboat painted in yellows, whites and reds. Four servant monkeys strain at the oars, while its true passenger sits in comfort behind a gauze curtain. Just for a moment an eye catches yours, but only for a moment. It would not do for a high-souled ape to see something so beneath its notice. Today the sprawling palace is called the Wild Wheeled Court. Tomorrow, who knows? The world of the Pentecost apes is one of cruel whimsy, where stolen traditions last only as long as their amusement. Okay, well, I'm guessing that's just done here then. There will be more zailing to be done today. The guards stare as you row away. It'll take some effort to in ingratiate yourself here. Perhaps if you could find something on one of the other islands. Okay, well... Um, I guess we go to the Ash Isthmus. Neither man nor ape claims this volcanic remnant between islands. Haunted, they say. Ridiculous. Of apes and monkeys. The trip offers a little time to think of the Pentes. Technically, they are monkeys rather than apes, but it is not tactful to remind them of this. To their high souled faces, the, the, the accepted name is Pentecost Apes. In private, though, the bloody monkeys is about as common. It is, one might say, an ad hominoid insult. Hmm. Black beaches give way to an oasis of gently glowing trees and the scent of rotting flowers. Mmm, my favourite. Enter the forest. Parasynthetic vegetation thrives in the empire of hands, fertile soil and cool humidity. Well, we'll have a look, I guess. Into the woods. Wild natural paths run between clumps of trees softly lit by a dim glow dim green glow, I apologise, and the occasional glimmer of false stars through the canopy. Only the cracking of leaves and the soothing sounds of water break the serenity of this volcano-forged paradise. Yeah. Black beaches give way to an oasis, wait that bit, hunt for supplies, which is a high-risk challenge. We can relax in a hot spring or we can return to the boat. Well, I'm not too fussed by supplies. Supplies are okay. Uh, we could relax, I suppose. That might knock some terror down. Lost five terror. Awesome. Steam and a hint of sulphur gently rise from a secluded natural pool flanked by trees and mushrooms. You slip out of your itchy clothes and into the welcoming care, care, caress of hot, deep water. The salt and sweats of zailing life melt away as you simply float, bare and free. Along... Along? Where did I get that from? Above, false stars glimmer bright enough to be worth wishing on. All around the glow of the trees casts ambient calm on the silent peace. How long has it been since you had a moment like this? Since London? Longer? Uh -huh. So we get to have a think for someone. Uh, we could have a thought for our lover, thought for our child. One day we will bring them here to this place, or will it be your hearing of tales of adventure in impossible lands? What would you think of our lover? Yeah. That might be pretty good. It seems like there's advantages to choosing your lover or your child over the others. 
So, should we go with child? Let's go with child. Your story is yet to be written. Perhaps the Z beckons them as it did you. Perhaps it is not. Salt cannot run in everyone's veins. Will they be the toast of the singing mandrake? Run with the scoundrels of the flit? You cannot be as much of their life as they may or may not wish you to be. But that doesn't mean they... Wait, what's that? It sounded like giggling. A tiny blonde girl perches watching on a rock. Her innocent grin is spiced with mischievous glee. Stop staring at my dong! She moves like a monkey, but she giggles like an imp at the look on your face at being caught bathing in her hot spring and the one that floods onto it as she scoops up your clothes. Shipped wrecked as a baby, raised by the Empire of Hands, she now plays between the worlds of apes and men, neither quite one nor entirely of the other. Demand that she puts those down at once, or a desperate swim. Ooh. Well, shouting at kids is never good. So let's, let's desperately swim for our clothes. The monkey found him makes things interesting. She waits, grinning innocently, until you emerge from the hot spring of nothing but your strategically placed hands for modesty. Before you can get close enough, though, she bolts from her crouched position and into the forest on all fours, a scampering run that turns every rock and fallen tree into a springboard. So we can chase the monkey foundling or fire upon them let them stare. Well, no, I want, my, I want my clothes back. Damn it! You cannot return to the crew like this. The branches scrape against your skin. The damp mud squidges between your toes. There is no sign of the monkey foundling, but her tracks are easily followed. Ship, oh, I've read that bit. A forest clearing. Uh, the footprints le lead here. She has not even attempted to hide them. It is as if she wants you to follow. Or we can give up. No, we'll carry on. Ouch. Your hand slaps to your stinging buttock. The little stone lands in the dirt as a familiar giggle comes from above. You look to see the monkey foundling dangling upside down from a bench by her legs. A blowpipe in hand and a bag just out of your reach. Tantalisingly so. Taking a deep breath. You politely, very politely request that she return your damned clothes now. But the monkey foundling listens and gives it some thought, tapping her blowpipe against her lips as she decides. Say please, she grins. Please. There, it is said. Pretty please. Uh, we could throw a rock at her. <laughs> you little shit. No, no, we, uh, we, uh, we'll say pretty please. Pretty, pretty please. She adds, starting a giggle. Is my, I don't think my iron, iron qualities put that up at all. Uh, damn it, it is freezing. How much longer? Pretty, 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 please. Is this is this going to keep going on? My, my iron quality isn't getting any better. So, <sighs> okay, your anguish plea echoes through the trees. You appear to have pretty, pretty pleased her, and she decides you deserve a reward. She fishes in her bag and generously throws you a sock. A single solitary sock. She learns a few new swear words as she races off across the branches, near double up of laughter. Well, at least I can cover my dong, I guess. Pursue the monkey foundling. Only 24%? Well, should have found a rock at her. Okay, we'll try. We failed. Your feet step into the cord rope just as the monkey foundling cuts loose the counterweight and you feel yourself flying upside down into the trees. Of course she has traps. The wider empire has no shortage of would-be invaders, man and monkey alike. She sits, sits back and enjoys the show as you flail around trying to get free, before apparently taking pity on you. Pity, however, turns out to be casually and without warning, cutting through the rope and dangling you in the air. Through the rope, dangling you in the air and sending you flailing, failing. I can't even get my words out. Falling back with a surprise thump to your mud to the muddy forest floor, it knocks the air out of your lungs, but you are otherwise unharmed. She pauses for a moment to make sure before her grin spreads back again as she races off to continue the game. Will I get her? I don't condone hitting children. She's going to punch in the face. The chase continues. The monkey foundling slides down a vine in front of you. She sticks out her tongue and scampers through a break in the trees. I'm not giving up now. I've been... the, humility... the humiliation here could not get any worse as far as I'm concerned. A marsh of terrible stench. It is a place that skunks would think twice of entering if the empire of hands had such creatures the monkey foundling of course is unconcerned as much at home here as high in the branches or running the forest paths she almost dances effortlessly 
across a thin fallen tree that crosses the mire, surrounded by the foulest bubbling mud that has ever invaded your nostrils. She balances in the middle, daring you to try to follow. Please give me Bella this time. 24. Or we can give her a taste of her own medicine. Pranks? You'll show her how they're done. Yes, yeah, screw it. The monkey foundling's eyes widen in surprise as her balance slips. Oh, because you kick the tree as hard as you can. Boom! She fights to recover, but her bare feet slip on the trunk and she falls. Falls with a cut-off scream as she disappears into the foul marsh slime. For a moment, there is only silence and a few fading ripples. But then she explodes out, first gasping for air and then laughing and laughing as she splashes to shore in a noxious splatter of brown and green. She turns and salutes you, white teeth shining under all the muck. This time she beckons before she scampers into the woods, leaving a stinky trail in her wake. Whatever game this was, you suspect you just run it. Boom! Don't mess with the captain! I've still got a sock on my dong, by the way. A uh, small hut in the middle of the forest. Is this where the monkey foundling lives? Why would she lead you here of all places? Playmate of the monkey foundling. The monkey foundling herself is nowhere to be seen, but she has left you something. It sits outside the hut, carefully placed by a large happy face drawn in the black sand. A little prize for being such a good sport. Your clothes, however, are nowhere to be seen, of course. As the monkey part of her would no doubt demand. Where would the fun be in that? So we've got an outlandish artefact. So we've got a thousand echoes for that. I, Okay, fine. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, so it looks oh as it stands we've got to return to the ship anyway well there's no avoiding this any longer the crew reacts with the ex expected amount of sympathy to your naked return which is to, which is to say exactly none by the time you board the ship every last crew member is on hand to see and cheer with more than a couple letting off flares as impromptu fireworks it is many many days before the needling ceases and you are able to give an order without first scouring for innuendo on the plus side, it does boost at least the rest of the ship's mood while it lasts, and you have new treasure for your collection. You've had worse days. Well, that's not that terror down. We can't moan at that. Uh, well, that was quite a long one, though. Right, Fountainhead Island. What be here? Ancient secrets peek out of the trees. Any may visit, but few penties ever bother to make the pilgrimage. A young ancient empire. The empire of hands is hardly as old as they pretend, but mimicry and theft infuses their whole culture. If the Pentis have come to think that rulers should be buried in ancient temples, then it is ancient temples that will be built. It would hardly be the first time their attempts to mirror humanity have entirely missed the point. Swiftly growing vegetation keeps a thick forest wrapped around variably ancient ruins. Even the yet-to-be-plundered ones are heavily scarred with crowbar marks. So there's a temple in the forest, or we can return to the boat. So I guess we're going into the forest. In a clearing of the parasynthetic trees looms an imposing structure of wood and stone, the Vault of the First Emperor. It stretches through the forest in a number of styles, each designed by the whims of the latest Pentecost apes who felt it needed to be made, made it, new word for you, made grander. It would take a dedicated team to break in and uncover its secrets. Perhaps you will bring one here later. Uh, that's all for this, I guess. Uh, what else we got? One more scouting trip to Hearthsake Island. The Admiralty has never stated precisely why it seeks to keep the uh, Empire confined, though most opposition to it fades once said opposers actually encounter a Pentecost ape. They have been easy to corral, however. Though they do not lack wit, there is not an inventive bone in their hairless bodies. Or hair, hairy bodies. Oh, a hair, hairless ape. Not, well, that's a human, pretty much, isn't it? Uh, and no amount of stolen humanity has taught them the art of creating engines. The survivors of a pirate expedition have stolen this land, where apes are unwelcome except as an entree. Mm. So we've got the lo lost treasure hunter will approach the village. Let's do the lost treasure hunter. He squints at a, mat a map, muttering incoherently. Nor for each city the bats have brought down. He wipes his brow. Have you seen a big X on the ground by any chance? I got these four map pieces that got me this far and said X would mark the spot, but I can't find an X anywhere. It looks at the map. He looks at the map sadly. It should be here, it says. Now where am I supposed to dig? He's too busy to talk right now, but adds that he will be in the village later if you want to trade adventuring supplies. Don't try the meatballs, he warns, getting back to his search. You just don't want to do that. Okay, well, we'll go to the village then, I guess. Greasy smoke and guilty, tempting aromas rise from a collection of huts around a long beach pirate ship and a field of pointedly impaled mon monkeys. 
An explosion almost takes off your head. Sorry about that, booms the boisterous pirate, slowing a smoking blunderbuss as bits of shattered tree rain down. New arrival, are we? Well, if you haven't got a tail, you're all right by me. He squints, momentarily suspicious. You don't have a tail, do you? Wouldn't put it past the thieving little buggers to go shaving one of their own. Wouldn't you know fair play if it kicked him up right up the arse? Or they wouldn't know even. His voice is louder than his bundabus. The congealed meat juices in his thick beard are better not considered. It was not madness that drove these pirates to cannibalism, but years of being shipwrecked without the comfort of meat. After a while, any meat would do. So we can dine at the captain's table, which I think will pull our terror up, or we can return to the boat. Hmm. Do excuse me. <coughs> Lots of talking in this episode. Uh, so, a bit of a dry throat. I think I'll have a quick drink. Okay, apologies. Now, I am very aware <coughs> that uh, our terror is okay. It's 59. It says we're now up to 75 before doing this, so one would presume it's going to add on at least a few bits of terror. Terror is the worst thing right now, though, so I think we'll come back to this when our terror is a little bit lower. But our explanations is complete, which means we get our comprehensive port report. Fewer reasons to brave the waters of this, this far east, especially with the trade embargo. The Admiralty will pay especially well for up-to-date intelligence. Will that be that, then? All of them warrant further attention. For now, though, it would be best to see if your initial discoveries can whet the interest of anyone back home. And I think that's just done here. Cool. Let's crack on. That that was quite a lot of jibber jabbering. Uh, we're heading to the Chelinet to go and collect our our special uh, exciting thing, whatever that may be. It was um, it's, it's because we helped them in that fight, wasn't it? So let's turn our lights off. So hopefully they're going to have something nice for us. What be you? you got some fragments of vine in you? No. Okay, that's fine. I dig it. I dig it. We'll take the long route around. Hopefully we could uh, open up this next block up before looping back around. Let's flow, uh, let's, let's throw this Z-Bot Z out. Ooh. Oh, no. Empire of Hands. We've got that. We've found that already. No need to go back there. Full of damn dirty apes. But yeah, I think hopefully we can end up in the chair now. If not, maybe find... Ooh, we shall lose another terror there. Awesome. Oh, actually, the Empire of Hands is a pretty big one, all in all. Let's uh, open these up. Ash Isthmus. Is that Isthmus? I don't know. It's a hard one. Isthmus. I feel like there should be a vowel there somewhere. We'll try again. There might be something north underwater. No, nope, still just the Empire of Hands. What's our torpedoes? Nine. Okay. Again, just keeping close to the coast, trying to keep our tail down as much as possible. Fuel is an issue. I'm pretty sure we can buy it from the cello nut, so it's not really bad. But it's... Uh, Tory point. It's uh, it's definitely something we uh, we're going to have to address at some point. Now we gained a secret as well. What's our secrets like at the moment? I don't think uh, I've checked for a while. Let's have a quick look. Eight. Nice. But we're, we're definitely doing okay as far as this map's concerned. There's not a lot left. There's a few black parts in the middle we can try and discover as, as we make our way around on the next loop. Um, we definitely need to head down south. One would presume... Yeah, it's it's down south where we're going to be heading uh, to find uh, King Eater's Castle. I don't know if it's classed as a fixed section, like the whole of the west and south coast. Here's the chair, 
what else we got to do here? Just consulting my notes as we skim around. We need a hunting trophy. We got any hunting trophies? No. We do not. That's a shame. There might be something around here we can kill. You never know. So we've got the big turtle. Oh, there's a little turtle! Sack it down! You gonna light up for me or are you gonna say dark? There we go. We like a bit of colour. Three fuel. It, it's slightly worrying. We're definitely not gonna make it to Mount Palmerston. Not doing what we're doing at the moment. <gasps> what are you? Eater of names? Yeah. I'm not feeling that confident. We'll we'll just we'll 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 go to uh, the telly now. I've I've learnt I've learnt my lesson. That's where exploring gets you. Stay away. We'll see if there's anything up there. No. So we're not missing out on anything. What the bloody hell is that? It's like no boat I've ever seen before. He's slow. That's that's the only good thing. We, we If I had more fuel, I'd be happy taking it on. Want to see if I can sneak this square without him seeing us? Come on! Come on, we're basically in the middle of it. Give me it! Thank you. Uh, we've got some big, big ribs. Big ribs. you got to go through them, don't you? In fact, I think we're going a little bit out of the way now. Let's let's go back down. We can go to the Gamp Pole afterwards as well. It's still got flesh on. Sure, that means it hasn't been dead for that long. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe it's got something to do with the Gamp Pole itself, because that's where the all the sea beasts go to get skinned by that old crazy lady. So that would make sense. That's a hell of a job, though. No wonder she's so old. She's probably been doing that all her life. I've been very aware of the lack of music in this episode as well, so I do apologise. Don't have any control over that. Anyway, here we are. Right, so the Scrimshaw Chronicler. A scrawny man squats beneath an awning of gant coloured whale skin. What do you want? Ah, oh, you're the guy who wants the uh, hunting trophy. Which I don't have, and I cannot buy. Cowboy of Primordial Shrieks. Ugh. Okay, going to the channel now, I guess. Uh, can't help those guys out. Sure leave we could do. Obtain a doomed monster hunter. Compile a port report. We'll get the port report. Do we... So... Is that it? What about my... Um, my reward for that fight? Well, aren't I do something? Bastards. So if we go and get a bow of rancid flesh. Hmm, we could probably do that. But you're not selling fuel, are you? That in itself is not good. That in itself is not good. We could possibly buy it from Irem. Let's call in at the Gamp Pole first. And then we'll check it out. I was hoping we can... Uh, if we can pick something from the Gamp Pole, that'd be fine. I don't mind overpaying now as well. Let's get to that point. We know we can get it cheap from uh, Mount Palmerston. So that's not so bad. Uh-huh. Open up. Right, so I don't think we've got anything here which is going to help us. Approach the woman in red. Oh, 
Haven't we done all this before? I feel we've done, we've done this all before. I have no idea. Maybe we haven't. Maybe this is my first time in. It was marked on the map, so I presume we've been here before. Oh, well, okay. So, basically, so I've done this in my private game, uh, we need to either defend her or stay out of it and let them kill her. So, uh, we shall defend her. And we are learning the ways of haruspicy, which is uh, divination through the dissection of sea monsters, basically. So, we need to kill phallites, Behemustaches, Beloveds, or Trisky Gallants to bring more beasts to the Gamp Pole. Cool. Cool. Uh, we'll get a port report. Ah, uh, that favoured hazing method of many a veteran Zayla. Saved from particularly wet behind the ears recruits. Ask your captain to deliver this to the Gamp Pole. Go to the Gamp Pole and find my pocket watch. Tell the crew, tonight we dine at the Gamp Pole. A hilarious jape when not standing in the blasted place and hoping someone will pay for recent news from it. So basically, she is close to death, and we need to bring her stuff so she can find the answer to whatever it is she's looking for. That's pretty much how it goes. She sits in a ghoulish tent made of the bone and hide of long dead beasts, saving her energy for the next great behemoth to reach its grisly end. She sits with her eyes closed, a pair of disciples are wielding damp sponges, doing their best to moisten her cracked bone dry skin. Her fingernails have not been cut in decades. They rattle as she beckons you forward. So, ooh, we can bring her news. It may add context to her divinations. Let's do that. She listens intently to the latest gossip and scandal. How I miss them. Thank you. That makes many things clearer. And other things so much more confused. Let me show you some more of my art. I suspect it will have the same effect. So that helped us a little. Uh, we could ask about her, previous visitors. Um, I think we should end it here because there is a lot of reading here, I believe. And, uh, well, we'll do it next time. This has been quite heavy as it is right now. And that's our rancid flesh. That's what we need to take back to uh, uh, the uh, channel. But I don't think we've got the fuel in order to get away with it right now. Ah, no, we'll be fine. Oh, seven strange catches. That could be useful. Anyway, I'm digressing. We should do this on the next episode, and uh, I'll do it properly next time. Thank you for watching. As always, a like is appreciated, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.